Blockchain holds incredible potential to change how we use the internet on a day-to-day -day basis. But in light of the recent crypto slump, many people are watching from the sidelines saying, hey, where are the actual applications and the use cases? Well, today I want to share with you one major use case for blockchain that people are actually starting to use right now that could get much bigger because it solves a real problem. I actually predicted this on my YouTube channel just last November, and it's finally here. And it has nothing to do with money. So you're definitely going to watch this whole video if you're trying to stay two steps ahead in this space. So trust me, you don't want to miss this if you're trying to stay two steps ahead in this space. I'm explaining everything you need to understand in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory. On this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then definitely smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step-by-step -step start finish, break in the industry, increase your salary well past 100K, I can show you how to do that over at dappiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. So Mark Cuban has compared the moment that we're going through in crypto right now, kind of similar to what happened to the dot-com bubble in the early 2000s. Once it burst, there's a lot of disillusionment with the technology, but ultimately that was adopted and we have the internet that we do today. And what Mark is saying is that we need similar use cases with blockchain and smart contracts that provide real business value to usher in that next wave of adoption. Well, that moment could be now, particularly for the music industry. So let me explain. I don't know if you've ever tried to attend a live concert with one of your favorite artists. Let's just kind of set the stage for this. Imagine, you know, you're online, you're following one of your favorite artists. They post an update on Instagram that's like a picture of all their tour dates and you you know, scan that thing rapidly to see if they're going to be playing in your home city or a city near you. And you find out that they are. And with eager anticipation, you see that the tickets are going to go on sale at a certain date. And you mark your calendar for it. You show up on your computer, you know, an hour before, and you're just refreshing the page every single second, hoping that they might open the ticket sales early. But then when they do it right on time, you have a problem. You can't actually connect to the website. It starts getting slow. Or as soon as you're able to refresh the page, all the tickets are completely gone and you get locked out of the sale entirely. Okay, you've been waiting on this for weeks, maybe even months. And then you find that you have to go, you know, purchase these tickets on a secondary market like StubHub. And now they're like three, four, five, maybe even 10 times the price of what they were whenever you try to buy them originally when they were announced and you just feel totally dejected. Every bit of excitement was completely killed. And at this point, you're not even sure that you want to even go anymore. You may be priced out entirely. If you've ever personally experienced this, you know how incredibly frustrating this is. And this was all over the news last fall when this exact same thing happened with Taylor Swift. Basically, she tried to sell her tickets through a pre-sale through their verified fan program and scalpers and bots completely wiped out all the inventory before true fans could actually get any tickets. And of course, they're left purchasing them on secondary markets for insane prices. So I actually made a video last November talking about how blockchains could fix this, particularly with NFTs or non-fungible tokens. And it looks like that prediction is coming true right now with none other than the major player Ticketmaster themselves on the Ethereum blockchain. So Ticketmaster had just debuted NFT gated ticket sales, okay, on the Ethereum blockchain, starting with an artist, Avenged Sevenfold. And this has already happened and it's been quite successful. So Ticketmaster announced today that Ethereum NFT token gaining feature is live for artists and it was developed in partnership with popular metal band Avenged Sevenfold, which has its own Death Bats NFT club and has tested the token gaining feature ahead of the full rollout. So this is the tip of the iceberg and this could be widely available to, to many other artists and we can see this getting much bigger in the future. So let's see how it works. So first, let's clearly define the problem. The problem is that true fans, actual human beings who have a relationship with the artist want to purchase tickets from them at regular prices and they can't. So why is this? Well, essentially, whenever you go buy tickets, whenever they're you know announced, it's really hard to prove that number one, you're actually human and number two, that you're an actual fan of the artist. So you're not a bot and you're not just a scalper who's going to buy the ticket and then go flip it for a profit on a secondary market, leaving actual fans who want to attend the concert out of a fair shot. And Taylor Swift tried this with their verified fan program, but that didn't seem to work very well. The problem that we're actually trying to solve for is really a Sybil attack. And one solution to this is using non-fungible tokens on the blockchain to prove that you are actually, number one, a human, and number two, you are a true fan of this artist. And so what happened with the Avenged Sevenfold crowd is essentially they had their own NFT collection. If you purchased this NFT without announcing ahead of time that they were going to use this to help people purchase tickets in the future, 
Like you already held this, you were already a true fan, and then you were able to get early access to purchasing tickets at fair prices. As you can see here on Twitter, you know, the NFT was never meant to solve inflated prices for every ticket, but this user says that they're a Death Bats Club holder and was able to get two tickets at premium seating for $250, which included the $25 service fee. And these same two tickets would have cost close to $755 total and that it actually worked. And so basically what happened is you would go to the website where you would normally purchase the tickets like with your credit card, but you'd be able to connect your wallet, okay? And by connecting your wallet, you'd be able to prove that you actually own this NFT. And if you own the NFT, then you can actually take place on the pre-sale. So basically you, you connect here, the website would talk to the blockchain itself, okay, to check the NFT in your wallet to see if you actually own it. But then you would actually talk to the Ticketmaster website and then process the transaction normally, um, you know, with a credit card or something like that. And they would issue the standard digital ticket that they do presently. And so this is a big deal because this is a problem that blockchain is actually solving in a unique way. And it's also big because it has nothing to do with money. It has really nothing to do with speculative asset value of these. This is a real world use case for NFTs. And I've said time and time again on this channel that I think NFTs are great, okay? But you know, having a digital collectible, it's really just a picture on a blockchain is not what I personally see as the end game for NFTs. These you know, might be digital collectibles that have some aesthetic quality to them that is pleasing, but they also have an additional utility value to them that's solving a real world use case. And this is just scratching the surface because there's gonna be lots of people who are saying, hey, this is kind of weird because it's really just crypto kind of tacked onto this normal application. Well, again, this is the tip of the iceberg. We could see a future where these transactions are completely done on the blockchain where people receive you know, blockchain-based tickets and those tickets are only transferable maybe back to the issuer or something like that to prevent them completely from being sold on secondary markets or you could actually fix the price. And we might have a situation where you know, these transactions are done actually with cryptocurrency so they can be done completely on chain and remove, you know, credit cards entirely. But that assumes we get to the place where consumers are actually using crypto in a big way for digital payments on a day-to-day -day basis. And of course, this is also big because this has applications outside of just the music industry itself. I mean, you can think of any live event that you'd want to attend. You know, sporting events are an easy one to think of beyond this. And so let's talk about some potential problems with this implementation because you might be thinking like, hey, Okay, so all you have to do is hold an NFT to purchase this thing and prove that you're a fan, but what stops a scalper from buying an NFT or what stops, you know, a bot from actually having an NFT as well? So one potential solution that I've actually thought of around this is using something called a proof of attendance protocol to reward fans who might have attended concerts before and how you could have a ranked, you know, offering for your fans based on interactions they've taken with you in the past and then roll out, you know, offerings based on that. So here's an example. Let's say that you went to an event for a particular artist before, or really any other artist that was a part of the Ticketmaster network, okay? And then when you showed up to that event, you got an NFT in your wallet that you could only claim if you got there. That's what proof of attendance is, okay? And then once you got that and collected it, you could prove that you had been to one of these events before. And so when you show up to another presale, Maybe you're at the beginning of the queue. It's sort of like early bird check-in when you're flying, but you can't really buy it specifically for that. You actually had to go to other things before. And so if it's for that artist, you know, maybe you're at the front of the line, you know, for Avenge Sevenfold, if you've been to Avenge Sevenfold concert before, you're one of the first people that are offered new tickets, okay? And then after that, let's just say that you had, you know, purchased a ticket and actually attended an event for any other of the artists in this massive ticket master network. And the more that you've been to, the higher up you are in that queue. And let's say maybe those first couple of groups are offered tickets for five hours or one hour, six hours, 12 hours, whatever it is. And then you just keep rolling it out to much larger and larger groups. And you just keep going after that until it eventually reaches a public sale, which of course there's no probably good way at this point in time to stop bots entirely from purchasing the tickets and, and selling them in secondary markets. But that could cut down the likelihood that a really you know rabid true fan will be priced out of um, an initial offering like this. All right, so that's an overview of this massive use case for blockchain technology that is gaining adoption right now. It's gonna get rolled out to more artists. And I can see this as being a real solution to a problem that's been around the internet for a very long time that's made a lot of people mad that can you know really see a, some big adoption from here beyond just the music industry, also to any live event, sports, whatever. So this is big. And if you're a developer in this space and you wanna be building for this use case, this is a great thing to start thinking about for your portfolio or even a product idea that you have. And so if you're trying to do that and break into the industry, because I see this creating lots of jobs around the, even this specific use case, how can you do that? Well, of course you can smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm if you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. 
But you can check out my YouTube homepage. There's lots of free courses there that'll teach you how to become a blockchain developer. They're like Udemy course, they're totally free. And if you like those videos, you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I actually have a master blockchain step by step chart finish, break into the industry, increase your salary well past 100K over at adaptiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapversity.